sound of two Whitney R1830 twin wasps. Big cylinder, two row radial engines they are. Radial meaning the cylinders of the engine are spaced in a circle around around the crankshaft. There are two rows of two rows of seven cylinders. So 28 cylinders firing in synchronicity, keeping that beautiful airplane. Derek Head and Mac McKinney flying the cat for us today. Prototype of this aeroplane flew in 1935, introduced to the US Navy as the EPY 1936. E for patrol, B for bomber, and Y is the code for consolidated aircraft for people that made it. It had been designed by a brilliant aeronautical engineer, Isaac Macklin Matt, who's Mac, of Consolidated Aircraft Corporation in San Diego. One of his ideas hadn't thought of before was the floats for this aeroplane retracted into uh, to become the wingtips. You won't see any floats on the aeroplane at first. We shall hope to see them later. That of course saves drag. And it's a strange looking aeroplane because the wings are high above the fuselage on that pylon and the engines are mounted high in the wings. All that does is to keep the engines well away from the water. And interestingly, uh, as they come in, we see the floats coming down out of the wingtips there. This is what she would look like when she's about to land on water. Interestingly, because of where those engines are, high above the uh, cockpit, the propels are mounted in the roof of the cockpit rather than on the usual place on the console between the pilots. This is one of the <laughs> awkwardnesses of the PBY. She also suffers from heavy flying controls and there's no power assistance there. PBY drivers are recognizable by their thick wrists and big muscles. And of course operating a flying boat on and off water takes a lot of specialist training. And it's all made harder by the fact that the PBY has no flaps, you know, those things that we saw on the back of the wing of the VC-10. But, positive side on their long 14-hour flights they used to make, these crews would take a rest because there were bunks in the galley in the central compartment. Floats retracting up into the wings, and of course, uh, obviously we saw it taking off from the land, it has wheels which have retracted into the side of the fuselage. 1939, just before the war, the US Navy was going to cancel this in favour of more advanced replacements, but they didn't because of huge orders from Britain, Canada, Australia, France and the Netherlands, all of which needed, urgently, reliable patrol aeroplanes in the run-up to the Second World War. And eventually the US Navy placed its biggest single aircraft orders since the First World War. The Royal Air Force called it the Catalina instead of the PBY, after the Pacific island of Los Angeles. The name caught on. This is the Mark 5A. A standing for amphibious. Wheels and float gear. She carries the stars and bars of an aeroplane called Sophisticat, a United States Army Air Force OA-10A Catalina of the 5th Emergency Rescue Squadron, the 8th Air Force, based nearby here at Halesworth in Suffolk. While searching for a ditched Mustang pilot on March the 30th, 1945, landed, or perhaps alighted, spread a word on the sea off the Dutch coast, but couldn't take off because of ancient trouble. The next day, damaged by gunfire from Luftwaffe ME262 jets. Were picked up by a friendly launch, but the Mustang pilot who they got to the rescue was taken prisoner by the Germans. And the loss of that aircraft, Sophisticat, is commemorated along with all other eight Air Force aircraft losses on the glass panels here at the back of the American Air Museum. 